For 2.6 from the book, uh, we are talking about higher order derivatives, in other words, derivatives after the first. So we could have a first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, nth derivative, and um, we're going to look at a couple different things with this, all right? So we've got a polynomial here, and first it asks us for y prime. So using the power rule, we can take the derivative of each part, so we get 12x squared minus 32x plus nine, okay? And then y double prime, we would re we read that double prime, okay? Um, for y double prime, we need to take the derivative of y prime, okay? So to do that, we use the power rule again, and we get 24x minus 32 plus zero. Okay, so um, just some notations for derivatives. We've already looked at a few things for first derivatives, so like f prime of x or y prime or dy over dx, all of these mean the derivative with respect to x, okay? And then the second derivative would be the derivative of these. So the derivative of f prime, we would write f double prime. For y prime, the derivative would be y double prime. Now, this one right here, um, in the 2.5 lesson, we talked about how this is actually the operator derivative with respect to x of y, okay? So then if we want to take the second derivative, we need to take the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative, which is dy over dx, and then this we write as d squared y over dx squared. Now, we don't need to put parentheses around the dx because d and x are not variables. dx by itself means um, the, you'll, and we'll get to this later, but it means the differential of x. So it means, this means something together. Okay, so it's not really that these are separate variables, um, but this is the notation for second derivative. Okay, and then more generally, if we have the nth derivative, um, for this one right here, we would write that as dn of y over dx to the nth. Okay, so this means the nth derivative for whatever value of n. Um, now, for, for the prime notation, um, we can use, for third derivative, I'll stick this in here, we can use a prime notation one more time, okay? So third derivative would be f triple prime or y triple prime. But for the fourth or any higher derivatives, we would use parentheses. So we would say f, and then we put parentheses around the fourth. So it's, 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 it's a difference between raising something to the fourth power and taking the fourth derivative. If we don't have the parentheses on there, that means f raised to the fourth power, but if we do put the parentheses on there, that means fourth derivative, okay? And then likewise with this, this would be the fourth derivative of y, okay? And then for the nth derivative, we would say f and then raised to the nth in parentheses, but we read it as nth derivative of f and nth derivative of y. Okay, so if you're asked for the second or third derivative, that just means take the derivative that many times. I do wanna look at um, a particular case where uh, a higher derivative gives us a little bit of a pattern. For sine and cosine, we know that with the possibility of including a negative in as a coefficient, they are each other's derivative, okay? So let's look at y equals sine to the x and taking the derivative. In this case, it's asking us for the 20th derivative. Now, I don't want to take this derivative 20 times, but what I can do is I can take the derivative a few times and then find a pattern, okay? Uh, so for this, I'm gonna write y prime is equal to cosine x, okay? And then the second derivative, y double prime, is equal to the opposite of sine x. The third derivative is equal to negative one times the derivative of sine would be negative cosine x. And then the fourth derivative is the opposite of the derivative of cosine, so that would be positive sine x. Now, we notice that the original function, or we could say the zeroth derivative of sine, and the fourth derivative of sine are the same thing, okay? So what this means is the fifth derivative is going to be the same as the first, the sixth derivative is going to be the same as the second, and so on, okay, where we have seventh, eighth, and then we find that every fourth derivative, we go back to the original function, okay? Now this only happens with sine and cosine, but any derivative that is a multiple of four, um, 
has a derivative that is equal to itself for either sine or cosine. So since 20 is divisible by 4, okay, because this pattern would continue, then I can say that the 20th derivative of sine of x is equal to sine of x. Now, if I were looking for a derivative that had, um, or that wasn't divisible by 4, so maybe I was doing like the 103rd derivative of sine of x, Okay, well, the first, that would be, since uh, 103 is one less than a multiple of four, then I would be at the same as the third derivative here. So this is going to be negative cosine x. So we can use this pattern to answer questions like this where it says 20th derivative. I don't actually expect you to do it 20 times, okay? Um, it's very unlikely that you will be asked to write something out higher than the third derivative. If you're asked for a derivative higher than that, then you should be looking for some kind of pattern. Now, one thing I want to point out with this, this is just for plain sine x and cosine x. If we have something else involved, like um, a composition of functions, then we need to um, apply that correctly. We still need to use the chain rule, okay? So, for example, if I had y equals sine of 3x, okay, then, and I wanted to know what is the, you know, 10th derivative or something like that, well, first derivative would be 3 times sine of 3x because this is my u and then u prime is equal to 3. Okay, so I would have cosine of 3x times 3. And then the second derivative, I would have 3 times the, oh, I'm sorry, this should be cosine, not sine. Sorry about that. Okay, so derivative of cosine is negative sine and then times another 3 for what's in here, but then times the 3 that is in front, so we would have negative 9 sine of 3x, third derivative, I would be multiplying the derivative of sine 3x, which is cosine 3x times 3 times negative 9, which gives us negative 27 cosine 3x. And we again see this pattern where um, the trig function is still going to repeat in fours, okay, because fourth derivative would be back to something times a, co or a coefficient times sine of 3x, but this is going to be negative 27 times another 3. This is actually going to be uh, 3 to the fourth, okay? And so we see that if there's a coefficient inside here, then we need to keep that in mind as we take the derivative. So if I wanted to know like the the 10th derivative, I think is what I said earlier, this is going to be th uh, 3 to the 10th times and then the I have a, if I divide this by four, I have a remainder of two. So times the second derivative of sine, which is negative sine. So negative in front and sine of three X there. Okay, for this one right here, um, again, we have, we're asked for the fifth derivative. We, we are looking for a pattern. Um, for all of these, now this is, if I look at these terms right here, this is a polynomial. Um, I do have fractions and radicals, but it doesn't matter because they aren't in exponents of the x's. The x powers are 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So if I'm looking for the fifth derivative, okay, let's look at what happens after the first derivative. We'll just start with 1 and see, okay? We have 12 times 4, so 48x cubed, and then minus, and then 27 over 31 times 3 is going to be 81 over... 31 x squared and then plus 2 x times root 7 and then minus 1 12th times 1 and then that's a 0. Okay, so this last term dropped off because it was a constant, its derivative is 0. This term that was linear is now a constant, so it will drop off on the next derivative. This one right here is now linear, so it will drop off if I take the derivative two more times. All right, because I'm using the power rule each time, with every derivative, I subtract one from the exponent, okay? So what this means is this term and this term are going to have derivatives um, before we get to five that are constant, okay? And so really, we just need to look at what's gonna happen with this first term. What's gonna happen when we take the fifth derivative of x to the fourth? It might be zero, Okay, because maybe we get to a constant and then we have a zero or maybe it stops before then. So really what we do, uh, what we need to do is just consider the first term. All right, let me show you what I mean. So the second derivative is going to be 48 times three. And really I'm gonna expand this. So this was 12 times four. Now we're multiplying by three 
and then x squared, and then some other things that will drop off. Third derivative is going to be 12 times 4 times 3 times 2 x to the first, okay, which we don't need to write the 1, but it doesn't matter there. The fourth derivative is going to be 12 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 x, which is a constant, meaning the fifth derivative is going to be 0. Okay, so what are we really what are we really establishing here? If we have a polynomial and we are taking a derivative that is anything higher than the degree of the polynomial, the derivative will always be zero. Okay? So we could write this more generally and say for a polynomial of degree n the n plus oneth derivative is zero. Okay, so this is this ties to what we just looked at, but just so you can see graphically here, um, and this is something that you may have observed when we were doing the 2.0 packet, but just so that we can look at this. If we have a cubic function, this is degree three, all right, so this is degree three, its derivative is going to be degree two, meaning it's going to be quadratic. And the derivative of a quadratic is going to be linear and the derivative of a linear is gonna be constant. So just to look at a graph here, um, let's go ahead and sketch the derivatives of this function and then the derivative of f prime. Okay, here we have a function that is increasing until one and appears to have a horizontal tangent at one. It also has a horizontal tangent at three, meaning that f prime will have zeros at one and three. So zero at one, zero at three. And then we have something that's positive and then negative and then positive. So above the x-axis and then below and then above again. Okay, so something like that. Um, I also know that I'm gonna have a min on f prime at x equals two because at x equals two, it appears for, to change from being concave down to concave up, f does, all right? So f prime has a minimum. And then f double prime is going to be the derivative of this. This function decreases down to x equals two, has a horizontal tangent at two, so x intercept on f double prime, and then increases, meaning we have something linear like this.